You mentioned some of the uh, worst uh, phenomena here, these mass murders in uh, Houston and in Chicago. Does this connect with Atlanta in any way? There's been, as you know, mass murders of all these black children in Atlanta. And as I recall, the FBI, uh, when they initially got in the case, after they made this a federal case, um, Reagan, or I guess it was Bush, went down there. Um, the FBI came out with a report that indicated that there may be sex abuse of some sort in the death of these children. Then it seemed to be pretty much dropped after an initial uh, play in the media. Do you have any comments on that? Yes. The first indications that leaked out that maybe the kids who were victimized in Atlanta, murdered, were actually boy prostitutes who went to the people in the cars to make a contact, uh, came out in February. And then uh, national or cable news network and ABC News tried to mention this as a possibility. It's a very delicate thing. It's almost an insult and affront to the black community to say the angels of Atlanta were really prostitutes, unless you believe, as I do, and unlike that law professor I quoted, unless you believe they're victims. They're not responsible for what, what is happening. They're being used and abused. But the public reaction was chilly, so the networks dropped it. They revived it in April and dropped it again. I have headlines here, quotations from news broadcasts about the boys possibly being hustlers and that the fellow who has been arrested and indicted being a photographer pr procurer. Uh, among the mothers of the first 10 kids, those women who went public and talked about the pr their predicament, uh, is one who said to the wire services in an interview, I'm afraid my son was involved in prostitution. I'm afraid that that's what got him killed. I'm afraid it's the link to the whole series of murders, and no newspaper in America printed the wire service copy. Isn't um, part of this whole uh, phenomenon dealt with a business of pornography, child pornography, oh, where pictures yes. are taken of these acts, uh, films are made, and this Wayne Williams, we know is a yeah, photographer, photographer, and we know he has training in electronics. He'd done radio work, he'd done recording work, so might he be involved in a film um, organization, and indeed possibly even a snuff organization. There's been some evidence about uh, snuff films where people are literally killed um, on film and that these are distributed, the films. So is there some possibility that that might be involved? I think in it's Atlanta possible and I think it's likely. But we're talking about an ongoing case and I think we have to be very careful about what we say. Uh, in Houston, I have seen myself big vans that don't have cabs on them. And I've seen young kids go into the van and not emerge for an hour or an hour and a half. And sometimes with the door open, I've seen photographic equipment inside. A raid was made on a mansion in Houston, although the newspapers in Houston referred to it as a flat. It was a mansion. Inside that mansion was more photographic equipment than KLRN, KLRU possesses. And that's one of the biggest <laughs> stations in the Southwest. Uh, bigger than Channel 13 in Houston possesses. Channel 13 played up the raid, but the news media besides Channel 13 didn't. It was as if uh, five guys in a little studio were taking candid camera shots of kids. They were producing books in there. There was also an arrest in Houston uh, in 1981 of a man who sold 20 different films, child pornography films, to somebody from Boston. Now, he was committing several fe federal crimes in doing that. Right. And among those films, although the newspapers would not print the information, uh, among those films was that of an infant being sexually used by men and a film in which somebody appears to have been murdered. Uh, that, that person hasn't gone to jail yet. What uh, about the bookstores and the, <clears throat> the places where they show movies and stuff like this? Here, here in town, for instance. I think that how much you, you don't find much evidence of this sort of thing in the bookstores because it's the people who are trading and, and dealing with this kind of thing, it's a very clandestine operation. And it, having gone through an investigation myself, I know how absolutely impossible it is to trail this stuff. I mean, you're dealing with people who are not stupid. 
you know, they are in levels of power because they're intelligent people, by and large, uh, and they they cover their tracks. And they're not about to be dealing with them through the bookstores. I think maybe five years ago you could find that sort of thing. But now it's, I think it's been pretty much cleaned up. Tom may have more. Well, I went into a, a bookstore in Austin two years ago in daylight. And my experience is the difference between the apparition in daytime and nighttime is the difference between night and day. Yet, in daylight, I first bought a magazine that had pictures of people of borderline age. They could have been 18, they could have been 17, and 17 is legal. And then I had the names of illegal publications. I first asked for a register that listed uh, boys by description. Uh, it was a, a catalog. The order of boy. I asked for yeah, that. Yeah, a bookstore. Yeah. You're in Austin? Yeah. Or, yeah. It's a crime to, to print that, to reproduce it, to distribute it, to buy it, to possess it. I, I broke the law by saying, I want that. And the other guy reached under the counter and handed it to me. Then I said, what about this? And he handed me that. And I said, what about this one? And he handed me one more. And I walked out of there with a lot of illegal goods. Mm -hmm. It was in the daytime. Uh, I understand that as of now, 1981, the same bookstores don't let somebody they don't know do that sort of thing, even at night. But I've been in places uh, in Houston within the last several months. One in particular I can describe to you had 40 cubicles uh, where supposedly men go in and put in quarters to watch dirty movies. And outside every cubicle was a little boy. I was approached both by little boys, as if I were a man who w might want a boy, and I was approached by older men who, in the dark, thought I looked young. Uh, that was on a weeknight, not on Friday or Saturday, in Houston. When I started following up, some films that we heard were circulating in the Houston area. I called an old friend of mine while I was investigating another case involved in this because we heard that it had been viewed by the district attorney's office in Houston. This friend was a good friend who I'd known through, from bars, you know, I mean, in a very social atmosphere, not a professional one. And I called him to ask about if he had heard anything about this film or viewed it himself, perhaps. He answered the phone, I said, hello, and we chatted for a moment. I said, by the way, have you heard anything about this film? And he cut me off and said, I've never talked to you before in my life. Boom. And, and I've never talked to him again. And I've known this guy for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. and as soon as I mentioned that film, it was like... Uh, when Boys for Sale was shown on TV, it was shown first as a nightly series, and then there was a summary program. The biggest bank in Houston withdrew its advertising from the show and from the station because it showed that program. Wow. And uh, the bank managed to get the other, the other advertisers for that program to withdraw their advertising. And if I might interject this just for a moment, uh, because it, was, it ties into the power uh, problems. I remember originally with the, the Robert Anderson, the pharmacist we talked about earlier, one of the items found in his apartment was a wallet, or checkbook, I guess, with a student's address and name on it. Well, we started to make some phone calls and try to contact this person. We finally got through to his father, and it turned out it was the, one of the major banks in Dallas, and his father was the bank president. And we thought we had a hot lead going. And next thing we know, a, a very, I can't mention names here, but a, a very powerful law enforcement agency head called us. We were asking about this individual's name in Dallas. And he called us back and said, and it was so cryptic that it was unusual, he just said, all I can say is forget Dallas. You know, like, don't touch it. Mm -hmm.